Maybe I picked the wrong time to move to Carolina. <laughs> hey, uh, everybody out there. Uh, this is going to be a little bit more of a kind of impromptu random vlog thing because uh, if you have checked the news recently, I I'm, I'm going to get hit with a hurricane soon. So um, now, now currently we got everything prepared for at least the, the next episode of the podcast to go through. And we got plans set in place in case I end up losing power for over two weeks. Fingers crossed that one doesn't happen. Uh, but, yeah, it's, um, been kind of interesting over the last few days, uh, preparing for Hurricane Florence. So, I'm gonna walk you through a few of the things that, if for whatever reason you happen to be in the path of a Category 4 hurricane, you should consider. Uh, first off, consider whether or not you're on a floodplain. That's super important. Especially this summer, we've had a bunch of rain, and so the soil is super saturated. So the extra amount of rain we're gonna get from this particular hurricane is gonna result in a lot of localized flooding. That's actually where really some of the biggest hazards are uh, associated this far inland where I am. I'm at least thankfully not on the coast. If I were on the coast, this would be evacuation as opposed to sit down, hunker down. Now. Some of the other things you want to consider are, well, wind. Particularly windblown debris. What's going to break open, cause structural damage, clash through some of your windows. So one of the things that you can do is make sure that you've got something covering your windows. Um, in this case, basically what I got to deal with is blinds. So. Put down the blinds as tightly as you can. If you got drapes, put those over. What you want is something so that when the, when, if, again, hoping, positive, stay positive, prepare for the worst, hope for the best, if this window were to break, the glass is gonna hopefully get deflected by the thing that's right in front of it. And so it's not just gonna shoot inward like a shotgun blast and basically cause concussive damage. Uh, now, there's this urban legend about taping your windows and making them stronger. Don't, don't, don't do that. Don't. Uh, it turns out that doesn't really strengthen the windows at all. And actually the worst thing is that it makes the little thousands of shards that you get from your window turn into about four or five big shards. And you really don't want four or five knife blades flying at you. That's, a, that's just a bad call. Don't, don't do that. In fact, generally speaking, you don't really want to be anywhere in an area where there's a lot of windows. So for my apartment, that means pretty much most of the living space of my apartment. Um, you'll also, as we go for a little tour, uh, got a lot of lawn furniture and all my, uh, my, my little plant, my little hydrangea, had that girl since my first year in Penn State. Still alive, still kicking. You can keep a potted plant hydrangea for longer than a year. It's just most of those that you buy at the grocery store are fertilized to heck and not intended to live for a year. So I've got all this outdoor stuff kind of jammed inside. And actually, I've taken a lot of the valuable electronic material that I'm concerned might get water damage if the windows aren't necessarily completely solid or if I get some sort of implosion. Uh, again, Prepare for the worst, hope for the best. Um, I've taken all that, put it inside interior closets, wrapped things in, 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 uh, in, in plastic garbage bags. But the kind of expectation is that if the winds get particularly bad, the place where you're probably the safest is the place that has absolutely no windows and is the most amount of walls. So for me, it's this lovely, spacious, I can stand maybe two or three people across in this guest bathroom. Probably the, the safest part of my, uh, of my apartment. I've, uh, I've made, a, made a makeshift bed, or at least a place where, again, if any sort of glass or debris is flying around, I can wrap myself in it and sit in the bathtub. Because, you know, you want to have that. And here is where I've sort of prepared my preparedness uh, kit. Because you want to make sure the other things that can happen is the water system can get shut down, so you might just not have access to fresh water for up to seven days, possibly longer, but I've, they recommend you prepare for three to seven days. 
and also non-perishable foods that you can eat without having to worry about heating it because you're going to run out of electricity too. So I've got a lantern. This guy's good for about uh, 140 hours on low and I got extra set of backups for it so I'm good for 280 hours of that light on low if I need to. Uh, also again I've got got bottles of water and I've got enough let's see jugs of water to end up lasting me uh, again about seven days now again just for extra prep I've also another thing that you can do if for example let's say you don't have access to bottles of water because well that stuff starts to run out when a hurricane's coming you can also find ways to store fresh water from your tap beforehand. So I've done that as well. I got that big two, three gallon container and I filled it with tap water for the time being just in case. Now, again, with all that said, the other thing you wanna make sure about is that when you're preparing for the hurricane itself, when the winds are coming, make sure that all of your major doors are closed tight. You want to try and get as many walls to the outside world as possible and stay in as internal an area as you possibly can. Because as the hurricane's coming, it's coming with a massive amount of wind, it's coming with a massive amount of rain, and it can also occasionally spawn little tornadoes around it. So you just want to make sure that you're in a good, stable, safe location that's not going to get flooded. Thankfully for me, I'm on the second floor. If you're on the first floor, there's extra precautions that you need to take into account for the fact that you could be flooded. Um, now, lastly, oh, the last bits of your uh, hurricane preparedness kit that you want to make sure you have are ways to clean yourself. So I've got Purell and also some first aid kit, just in case you get any injuries, cuts, scrapes, abrasions, you want to be able to clean and treat those wounds. Uh, also, if you have any medicines before uh, that you need to make sure that you keep taking, make sure that you actually uh, get enough of those meds to last you over a week. And uh, another fun fact, which I think this came up, I think the Japanese government was, was tweeting this right around the time of the, the last big, uh, big earthquake, but cup of noodle. You might, you might think that you need to use warm water, and I'm sure in order for it to be slightly more tasty, you do, but if you just pour water into this and let it sit for 15 minutes, you can cold brew cup of noodle. Food for thought, or food for possibly the next seven days of my life. Again, prepare for the worst, hope for the best. Uh, also, one of these guys. Uh, if you've ever lived in tornado country or anything else, oh, any of those regions, you're probably familiar with one of these. This handy little device. I do it with my, hand, with my mouth because I got the hand on the camera and I don't have a person help with this. It's a crank operated radio. So you can connect to uh, the three different bands. You've got your emergency weather band, you've got your FM and your AM, and uh, you can just hand crank this bad boy. It will charge a generator inside and then I'm too far indoors. I need to get too close to a window, which is not ideally what you want in the middle of the worst parts of the windstorms. But this does connects to a radio, and the radio does work. Let's move out to a place where we can maybe get a better signal. Yeah, we're starting to get a signal here. Transmitted from located on the WRAL TV tower near Garner. The station serves the eastern Piedmont and central coastal plain of North Carolina. The current time is 1.52 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. So the other cool thing about this guy is that you can either hand crank it or you can set it out. I'm gonna get it so that the light is actually getting it better. You can put it out in the sun and it's got a little photoreceptor on it so that it can actually solar power. So if you do have sunlight or if you're without power and the storm's passed, you can put it outside, let it get generate some energy. And in an absolute pinch, if you need to charge a USB device, you can use this generator to do it. 
That said, another thing I'd recommend is one of those sort of portable cell phone charger batteries, something that can get three or four extra charges onto your cell phone. And also during the process, during the process of the storm, chances are you're not gonna have that good a service. You might drain your battery if you're just searching for service. So only put your cell phone service on when you actually are trying to get contact with someone else or receive messages. So that's, I think, gonna be about it. Obviously, don't travel during the height of the storm. Don't try and go over any roads that are obviously flooded because the water's way deeper than it actually appears. And yeah, everyone out there who is potentially affected by this, stay safe. Have a plan, prepare for it. And if an evacuation comes, be prepared to evacuate. And actually make sure that you've got things packed up clothing packed up, a bug out bag ready to go, just in case. So I might in the future do a video, if I take any video of the storm actually in progress. Chances are good I'm gonna be trying to conserve my battery as much as possible, but we'll see how things progress and uh, how catastrophic things are. Because again, hope for the best. See you guys.